Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and I uh, I do a lot of PS2 Modbow installs. It's one of it's one of the biggest things that people send to me. It's one of my favorite things to do. We sell the chips so people can do like if you want to do this yourself, you can do it. And it's just this is one of my favorite mods. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while of exactly how do I do these mods and. So that's what this video is going to be. How I do the wire management, all the little tips and techniques that I use, and it's very similar to the how I mod my PS1 video that I did, or my how I mod my mega amps. It's all very similar techniques, it's just that this one's a little bit more uh, con time consuming, slightly. So I use 30 AWG Kynar wire, which is honestly the only wire I think you can use for this mod. And I cut it all a little bit longer to length, and then I strip it all with uh, a pair of fingernail cutters, which is the easiest method I've found. So after you get all your wire prepped, and you have your install diagrams, because I'm not going to explain where to solder each point to, because every motherboard's different, I'm mainly going over the techniques for wire management and soldering to really small points. So as you see, I have the flux all over the board, so what I did was I actually took the wire, rubbed the wire through the flux, got a little bit of flux on the Kynar wire, as you see I just did right there, and then I tin up the Kynar wire so it has the solder on it already, and then for this particular one it was too long so I had to strip it, uh, clip it down a little bit with the fingernail cutters again, and then you just simply press the, the tinned wire to the location on the board done very not easy but very easy method and it works extremely well and because pretty much the flux is doing the work for you and right there I even bridge those connections just a swipe of the of the soldering iron unbridge the connections and now the connection itself is tinned you could also tin the connection as well and tin the wire and then just push down with the soldering iron I, I don't find that to be fully necessary because if you get a good amount of solder on the wire it'll just go right in perfectly and it's just for me this way is just a little bit faster you don't even, you could just tin the whole all the pads and then just with flux and then just push the wire onto it it's basically your preference of how you want to do it oh and we're using a three millimeter chisel tip very very critical very important um, to use like I found that this tip is the best for these it makes it a whole lot easier so yeah so for all these first points all it was was just cut all the wires a little longer to length strip them put them through the flux have the flux on the board tin the wires and then just put them to the location and just gently press down with the three millimeter chisel tip so that was on a PS2 Fat. Here it is on a PS2 Slim, just to show that you know the points are slightly different, but they're very similar. But it's the exact same method and technique if you're doing it to a PS2 Slim. And like I said, this is the exact same method and technique that I used for my PS, how I mod my PS1 video, my Mega Amps, and this is the same technique I use across the board. Uh, pretty much with most soldering obviously different situations call for different techniques and stuff like that but this is what I found to just be the easiest and best so now that we have all four of these you want to give them a you want to give each wire a nice tug after you solder it to make sure that you have a good solid uh, solder connection because that's also very important because you just want you want the solder connection to be strong enough on its own so now that we have those done all we're doing is we're just we're just kind of gently bending them into the generalized location just to kind of get them out of our way while we do the other side. Now the other side we're actually soldering it to the legs of this particular chip itself. Even though it's to the legs, same exact method and technique. Wipe the Kynar through some flux, get some flux on the wire, tin up the wire. <clears throat> the reason why I put the Kynar or why I tin the Kynar with, and make sure I put flux on it is because tinning Kynar wire isn't exactly the easiest thing. You kind of the flux really, really, really helps to get the solder to stick to it. And yeah, it was just after that you just press down. That's literally all it is. Is 
you get your prep work done and then when it comes time to side of the wire you just press down and here I actually end up bridging these two legs so this is really good because I'll show you uh, how to unbridge these connections which it happens so they're bridged first thing I tried to do is I just tried to wipe away the solder with the iron that didn't work so we're just heating up the bottom of the legs if you just apply heat to the bottom of the legs it'll heat up all the solder on the top and then you can use the solder sucker to remove it and I tried to wipe it away right there but it did not wipe so we're just going to use the solder sucker again boom and now it's perfect again so back to it tin up the tin up our wires put them in place and just put a gentle press of the three millimeter chisel tip you just press it down right on to where it goes and boom you're done so now I'm just going to do that two more times and then we'll have this chip done and then we'll uh, we'll get all the other solder connections on the board done and then we'll uh, focus on some wire management and how how to make it look pretty but I, that's what I wanted to focus on mainly is how to make it look cool while also how to solder to these very very small points in these small locations because it's a combo of both I mean you don't need to make it look cool at all you can just solder it and make sure if you have a good solder connection that's all that really matters but why not get creative and artistic with it you know why not it's awesome it's fun that's why this is my favorite mod to do because this is the one where you have the most creative freedom essentially all right so now that we have all those points tinned we've tugged on all our wires we've made sure that all our solder connections are good now we're going to get them in a generalized location first we're not going to continue the wire management aspect until we get all the points soldered to the board but we're just going to kind of get this generalized and we're going to put it into its area and right now you're just pressing it down creating like a little ribbon cable effect and you're going to use the tweezers to pull it all into place and if you look at the chip there's a ton of flux still underneath it so we're actually going to go back uh, a little in a little bit we're going to go back and we're going to clean up all that flux we just kind of want to get it generalized and by pre-moving all of these locations like of the wires like getting that nice bend people do 90 degree you could do 90 degree you could do like a nice little curve like whatever you want and then we're just getting it in place so the wires are kind of bent like see how they're bent in place already ish so we're just going to cover those with electrical tape to just keep them out of our way because we're going to go and solder more connections to the rest of the board so now that we just want them not to interfere with soldering on the rest of the board so the same thing we're just adding flux to all the different locations of where to solder to tin the wire and like right here we're soldering to like a little resistor some points you're gonna have to solder to like a little vi all depends on your motherboard and it's this but it's the same exact thing flux down tin up the wire use the three millimeter chisel tip to push down and it's the same exact as all the other points before so now we're going to go and we're going to do all the different different points on the entire ps2 and then once we have all those done then we're going to get into some wire management and trying to get a little you know creative and make it look cool you know the black and red alternating colors and stuff like that whatnot so here when I said we were going to go back and clean up the flux that's exactly what we're doing now we're just wiping away all that flux and like you could use no clean flux too but I like to use that flux for this so I can actually have some like on the board right there handy to wipe the wire in because I like tinning the Kynar wire because it makes my life significantly easier doing it that way so once we get all this flux off that's when the real wire management that's when it really starts and the first thing is just getting it all flat and this is very based upon your orientation like you saw how we have four wires going in five wires going up so they're both going to the same location so we bend them both in and then that's where we can push down get them flat and then pull them into the different place like their final resting place if you will so we're pulling them all in and then we add a little bit of super glue to all the bottom of the wires and that's the super glue with the brush gives you the most control over the amount that you use sometimes you can't see how much super glue is actually on that brush 
so you end up using a little bit more but I always like to give it a nice little wipe on the super glue brush container itself but you still have to be careful so right now I've decided we're gonna do our first bend and I place the chip kind of right after the second chip because I want to bend it on top of the second chip and then like have it like flutter into it's uh, all the connections that you solder it to on the mod boat chip by the way just in case anybody didn't know this mod chip allows your PlayStation to play burned games and it makes it region and import free so uh, this PlayStation can play games from uh, any region and you can also play burn games from any region as well so back to the wire management aspect the biggest point we're going for is getting the whole all the wires flat right next to each other so just by rubbing your fingernail across all of them you can kind of push them into place and you just sort of continue to do that until they all stay flat because you don't want one to accidentally overlap on another and you want them to be nice and flat, kind of like a fake ribbon cable, because that's essentially what we're doing, is we're making our own fake ribbon cable. And then just a little bit on the bottom right there, and then that's gonna go into place. And then once we have that into place, we can then start to solder them all directly to the chip. As you see right there, we did another little bend to the top left and then we bent them into the orientation where they're all going to the chip. And now, since we're going to be soldering to the chip, we're going to be switching our tip to the standard soldering iron tip from the 3 millimeter chisel. So what you do now is each wire is longer, so you cut each one, strip it, and actually my head got in the way of me doing it this entire time for this whole mod from from now on so I'm switching to this mod which I did that's why all the wires are now red because this was another mod bow that I did but I actually got better footage of this particular part of this one where my head's not in the way so it's the same thing you just you cut them to length in the moment right before you solder it and if you see uh, underneath the tweezers, I actually got a nice uh, super glue blob there because I didn't see how much super glue was on my little brush and it kind of made it ugly. Oh well. Still not perfect, but what are you going to do? So you bend each wire into place. And you got to also make sure that you know your, your correct wires are soldering to the correct uh, point, but it's pretty easy to trace them back when they're all nice and flat. It's actually really easy to do and if you understand which points are going where beforehand it makes it even easier so now yeah it's just the same thing same thing for the mega amps the ps1 same exact thing from both those videos is you're you're cutting the wire to length stripping it and tinning it in the moment in this particular case we actually tinned the modbo chip itself so we don't have to tip tin the kynar wire and we're just after it's stripped in tin or stripped we just push down right into the solder joints and it's nice and we're just going to do that until that whole side's done and then we're going to go back to the other ps2 with the black and the red and we're going to do the other locations i just wanted to show because they're very similar mods because it's practically the same thing as you see right there so now we're tinning up each point with our nice with our standard soldering iron tip we're getting each one tinned so that all we have to do is cut and strip in the moment and then just push down with the soldering iron so here we're cutting and stripping in the moment and then using the tweezers to get to the right location And yeah, it's a lot of fun. So now, the final point is uh, the power and ground for this chip. So the power and ground, we're not using the, the 30 AWG kind. We're actually using a little bit thicker gauge. Uh, this is either 26 or 28. Either one's fine. As long, it's just got to be a little bit thicker. So we're tinning. We flux tinned, and we're doing power and ground. And we're just using a little bit thicker wire. But it's the same, same method, same everything. It's just... Put flux on the board, tin it up, strip it, and then you cut it in the moment. 
to length so that way you have complete control over your design so I hope this was very helpful to anybody who may want to do one of these mods. Uh, like I said, we, we sell these mod chips on our website, RetroGamingArts.com, if you want to do it yourself. Uh, we take send-ins for these. This is, this is probably my favorite one where people send us their PlayStation 2. I do this, and then I send it back to them. That, that's my favorite. Like I said, it's my favorite one to do because I get to be fully creative with it every time. And if you've seen my install gallery of a whole bunch of different ones of these, you'll see that I really enjoy this because I do. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know, do you have you attempted this mod? Have you done them before? What's your thoughts? Here's the final product. Let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching this, checking this out, and checking out my, my install gallery, my Mega Amp video, my PS1 video, and all my soldering videos, and all my videos in general. I like to do some creative stuff, and thank you. And I'll see you guys next time.